Hey guys, welcome back. This video is going to be a little bit different than the ones I typically produce, as in it's not tobacco focused, but I'm sure a lot of you are gonna find it interesting nonetheless. I'm a big fan of the way that beer tastes. I know that that's not true for a lot of people. I know that that's very true for some people, but it is a, a specific flavor that can't be found anywhere else. I like it. I like uh, the idea that there's a bread flavored drink that you can have. But the thing about it is you don't always want to have alcohol. That's where non-alcoholic beer comes in. But there's another problem with that. And that is that those have calories. And a couple of calories here and there are not so bad. It's a little bit awful to be so pedantic about that kind of thing. But there are situations where you don't want to add additional calories to what you're drinking. So for starters, let's say you're on a ketogenic diet and you are craving the flavor of beer, which a lot of people miss. That's a good example. Number two is if you are fasting. You don't want to add additional calories, but you do want something that isn't just diet soda or black coffee. Number three is if it's before, during, or after the gym. You've already taken your pre-workout, you want something that's a little bit more refreshing than water, but you don't necessarily want the impact that calories would have. And number four is cost. It's a little bit strange, but these non-alcoholic brews, especially the craft non-alcoholic brews that are on the market nowadays, tend to run at the same price or even a little bit more expensive than beers in the same category. So, while well, I was at Total Wine, I saw this stuff, and this is what sparked it off to begin with. Suntory All Free Crisp and Light Refreshment. To be fair, for the semantics obsessed among you, this is not going to really be a beer recipe, right? Beer is brewed. And this isn't even going to be the way that non-alcoholic beer is typically made. What they usually do is they will steep the grains, add the malt, add the hops, boil for an hour, and then stop. They'll dilute it with water because sugar is more viscous than the alcohol that it becomes. Or they will figure out other tricks to make it drinkable. Or if you are Hispanic or from Europe, you're probably familiar with Malta, malt beverages. And that's where you start to brew the beer and then you stop before any alcohol has been formed, before any yeast is added. And that's a good drink in its own right, but it is very caloric. So I took a look at the ingredients and you can see carbonated water, malted barley, natural flavor, caramel color, lactic acid, phosphoric acid, ascorbic acid, modified hop extract, and hops. I don't have any of this bullshit, but I do have carbonated water, I do have malted barley, and I'll get to that in a little bit, and I do have hop extract, and I do have some citric acid as a food safe way to adjust the, adjust the acidity when we're all done. I spent some time thinking about how I was going to go about this, and I think I've got a pretty good plan. In Korea, the popular drink over there is this stuff. It's barley tea. This isn't going to be the barley water you're familiar with if you're from Britain. This stuff is roasted. They're a big fan of roasting grains and steeping them, and it's got a great taste. I actually don't like this stuff too much on its own. I think it's a little bit... Um, it's a little bit watery, obviously, but they have a similar drink made of roasted corn. It's got a very strong frosted flake bourbon flavor. I'm a big fan of that stuff, but this will be very useful for what we're going to do today. So if you have an Asian grocery, pick this up. If it's got Korean hanjul on it or hangul, then it's probably roasted. You're going to be safe. Next ingredient we have is hops. I had never brewed beer before until I started preparing for this video. I got interested in the process. I'm brewing 
a Guinness clone right now. So I didn't exactly know how many grams of hops I should be getting. And this is way overboard. For comparison, the five gallons of Guinness that I have brewing right now only use two ounces of hops, and this is five. So this is more than enough for our purposes. If you are gonna buy hops, I've discovered, buy them from a brewer's shop, either online, or if you have the chance, visit a local brew shop, and they will get you sorted out. These are actually very cheap. This entire pack cost me $10, and it's way, way, way more than I need, but now that I'm brewing real beer, I'll be able to use it, hopefully. If you're interested in the strain, these are continental hops. I chose something that is between just a straight bittering agent and a flavoring agent. It's double bag because the smell on this is unbelievable. And everywhere I brought it, people have commented on it. When you smell it out of the pack or when you actually take one of the little pellets and chew on it, the taste is fantastic. It tastes like grapefruit, tastes like citrus. It's not quite IPA, but it's approaching. But when it's ambient in the air, it doesn't get skunky, it doesn't take on a cannabis smell, but it does kind of have a smell of someone is cooking plastic in the slow cooker. So the third ingredient, which I don't have pictured here, is carbonated water, and that's pretty simple. Pick up a soda stream, you can find them extremely cheap nowadays, even cheaper if you're willing to go with a clone, and they all do the same thing. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to brew the tea, I'm going to add the hops, I'm going to strain it, and my idea for this here is to make a concentrate. Number one, because the soda stream plays better with concentrates added after the fact instead of beforehand. Things get a little bit messy. And then number two is I don't necessarily have the storage in my fridge for a shitload of zero calorie beer, but I do have the storage for one bottle of concentrate. So let's get started. This whole recipe is going to be very touch and go. I'm not working on anything that somebody's done before. This is new territory. This is unexplored ground. I put my French press on. You can steep this any other way. I just find that the French press is the best way to brew tea. And I'll also have weights for you to take a look at if you're interested in copying my exact results. Barley teas are usually served family style, so they're brewed all at once and they're brewed in a great big pitcher. So they're gonna come in larger tea bags like these sachets. I'm gonna take the whole thing and I'm gonna cram it down into my French press. That's about 56 grams. That's not gonna be exact calculations because it does have the weight of the paper in the bag, but it's not that much. Nothing to worry about. I should have set it to tear before then. I'll do the math after the fact. Going to fill my French press. This French press is from Ikea, holds about one liter of water. But I'm not gonna be so exacting, like I said. There we go. Gonna wait for that to steep. I'm not exactly sure that the color is going to be beery. It has a color of like a, let's call it what it is, like urine. A little bit lighter than chamomile, a little bit more, a little bit more insipid. While we do that, I'm going to brew some more. Hops are admittedly going to be a little bit trickier. I'm going to eyeball it, but it should work. I'm not going to add much at all really doesn't need that much. Switch my units to ounces. There we go. So for five gallons, I used two ounces of hops. This really isn't going to be that much at all. That looks good. Take a look at that Shrek soup, folks. The smell is really good. 
the hot water brings out a lot of characteristics of the hops that you wouldn't recognize if you were just drinking cold beer. It's got more of a cannabis smell to it, but there is something more to it. There's something green, almost something vegetal. The citrus is still there. It's a little bit transformed by the heat. There's grapefruit still. Something like bergamot. And this brings me to the reason why I'm doing this on this channel to begin with. A while ago, the snooze maker, Connie Anderson, made a couple of beer-inspired snoozes. I never had the chance to try them. They were very limited release. I believe a couple were only sold at Melgren's Tobacco. Um, and others were, you know, before my time, before I was snoozing. So I'm a little bit jealous of the people who did get to try them. But making a beer or an IPA snooze in general probably isn't that hard, right? We have all the elements here before us. All we would need to do is add a little bit of that barley concentrate, add a little bit of this hop concentrate, maybe add actual hops during the cooking process. But the safer way to go is just add everything after it's cold. Maybe it'd be fun to replace the cooking water that we mix the tobacco into with that barley tea hey there's an idea maybe an upcoming video probably it's kind of silly to me how many non-alcoholic beverages are so expensive the biggest one the biggest transgressor to me is a brand called hop tea or hops tea i'll put a picture up on screen somewhere all it is is carbonated tea that has hops added to it it's supposed to appeal to the more health-conscious person, the tea drinker, the IPA enthusiast, the non-alcoholic beverage connoisseur. But the thing about those is that they're 2 or $3 a can. Even if you go directly to their website, the prices are unbelievable. And it shouldn't be that way. We just talked about how hops are almost nauseatingly cheap. For what they are almost too cheap for what they are tea is so inexpensive it boggles the mind especially if you go with a very cheapo black or green tea and you probably will if you're making a hop tea clone since it's the hops you want to taste that are backgrounded by the tea instead of the other way around and then buying a carbonator is so inexpensive it's hilarious so why anyone would spend two or three dollars on a can of carbonated tea with hops is beyond me. With that being said, I have done it many times before and they are very good. So if you have a chance to try one, buy one, and then no more, then follow this recipe. Everything has been nicely steeped for the hops. Since I don't have two French presses, I'm going to use our colander to get all that muck out. If there's a little bit of particulate in there still, I won't mind so much. But if you do have a more reliable way of getting this stuff out, maybe a cheesecloth, maybe a spice bag, maybe a reusable tea bag, use it. As for the barley tea, the color it's taking on, while not exactly like most beers, it has become less insipid. There is more depth to the color. Pretty happy with it. I will need to wait for this to cool, and I will need to wait for this to cool before I can add this because I'm going to be going drop by drop by drop. And the taste I'm looking for is something like a flat beer. As disgusting as that sounds, you have to remember we're kind of working backwards. We are starting with the worst flavors and adding our way towards a good final product. All right, I think it's time for us to put it all together. I have a bottle of carbonated water. I didn't go as far as I would go with cola. Beer has a softer carbonation. It's more subtle than a soft drink. Going to start, you know what? If you're following along methodically, I shouldn't do you the injustice. 
of not showing you the measurements. But I won't be keeping track of them. Keep in mind this stuff is also hot. Well, let's try... Let's try the tea. With the carbonation to begin with. It's gotten a lot lighter. The smells are very beery in the room right now. It's very, very good. There is a need for kind of an acid to cut through some of the flavor. You can pick this stuff up anywhere. The flavor is a little bit different than the ascorbic acid they're using in the Suntory, but it's not that different. All we need is something with a little bit of acidic bite to help it along. And plus, I was impatient and this stuff is still hot, so keep that in mind. But let's try it with some hops now, I think. That'll give us a better idea. Let's set it to tear. I think half is going to be the way we do this. And I haven't kept in mind that I'm going to lose some carbonation, so I'll be right back to ultra carbonate that soda stream water. Got some more bubbles in there. Let's add the hops first. There are some things in hops that aid in that foam head. That might be way too much, I think. Let me have a smell. It's nice. It almost smells like lemonade, like if you roasted lemonade. Let's add our carbonated water. I can also see why they add caramel coloring. There's no way this stuff is gonna look exactly like beer. Cheers. Wow. <laughs> this stuff is actually really good. It's like drinking a hot IPA. I know that's gonna sound disgusting, but that's, those are the flavors I'm getting. Let me give you the play by play. The first things that hit your palate, number one, the carbonation. Because there's no ambient sugar or ambient starch or carbohydrate in the beer, to kind of soften the blow of the carbonation, a lot more carbon dioxide is gonna be released a lot more quickly. So the bubbles are more fearsome on the tongue, if that makes any sense. The second thing that hits your palate is a taste of hops. And it's that, it's that sharp cut that you get when you drink an IPA. It's uh. It's penetrating, I think is a good word for it. Not piercing, not nauseating, but immediately followed by, oh, this is a carbonated drink. You get that, you get that little zing of the hops. Not bitter, or not overwhelmingly bitter. There is some bitterness to this like a real beer would have. Another taste. Behind everything, shading everything, there is this barley undercurrent. It's more grain flavor than you would get from something like Miller Lite. Um, it's good. And then the finish. It does have a little bit of that beer grip. Not like a whiskey or a gin sting. Just the grip that beer has on your throat. I think the hops are actually helping a lot and I think that was the perfect amount of hops to add to this. I'm really impressed. That was good. And then on, 
on the throat, right at the start of the throat, you are getting the crispiness of the hops. Even when it's hot, even when it's hot, guys. Man, this stuff is good. <laughs> First time drinking a warm, non-alcoholic, zero-calorie APA or IPA, that's for sure. But no, it's good. This isn't even truly an IPA, right? There are different types of hops that people would associate more with different flavors, but I am getting a lot of those IPA flavors out of this. I, I just wish that the color was better and less like piss. Maybe caramel coloring is due in the future. Or maybe if you want to go to the brew store, you could always ask for roasted hops. Or pfft, roasted malt. Then steep that as you would if you were making beer, but don't add malt extract or anything. Just a little bit, a little bit of the roasted malt for the color. Okay, guys, I've assembled a beautiful flight of non-alcoholic beer of all different sorts to see where ours stacks up. And tell you right away. <laughs> Ours doesn't have anywhere near the depth of color, nor does it have the nice creamy head. Even Suntory's non-caloric offering has a little bit of a head that sticks to the walls of the glass. So, not exactly disappointing, right? If you're drinking it in the dark, it doesn't matter what it's got. But a little bit concerning Right, one of these is definitely the least appetizing out of the whole bunch. It actually looks like some ciders that I've had have this kind of appearance. So first off, going to taste the Lagunitas IPNA. This is more or less what we're trying to replicate with this one. Very crisp. A little bit bitter. There is some sweetness in the front with that that interruption of the carbonation with the hops. It's not as overwhelming as some IPAs can be, but it doesn't have that kind of skunky marijuana taste that something like um, Beck's non-alcoholic would have. And it's got a really clean finish, right? Some of these also have a claggy quality because they don't have as many sugars in them or they have more sugars than ought to be in them in them next i'm going to try hairless dog this is one i've never had before so let's see how it goes it's supposed to be a black ale i don't like this one <laughs> I really do not like, holy sh, whoa, that's bad. Okay. Okay, cool, all right. This is really bad. This is awful. Get, I'll take another sip and I'll tell you what's going on. There are some hops, but the hops don't taste good. Right away, there is the taste and the retrohale of Grandma's old jar of molasses that you keep dipping your finger into, thinking it'll suddenly taste good. But it's not nice molasses. It's not sweeter, you know, fruitcake molasses. It's raisin skins and pennies molasses. And then... Beyond that is a taste of, um, like, wet sugar. If you've ever tasted a nut, right, and I'm sure many of you have, if you've ever reached in the pantry and grabbed a pack of nuts you thought were good, but turned out not to be, this has kind of that on the pre-finish. And then on the finish is just more of that horrible molasses flavor. It's really bad. That one gets a 2. Out of 100. The next is the one to beat, the Suntory All Free. These two, by the way, have 
I believe the Lagunitas has 70 or 90, and the hairless dog has the nutrition facts printed on the side. It has 80 calories. Never read the ingredients for this one. I'd be surprised if there were any. Cultured dextrose, melted barley hops. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's just the malt that they're using it really tastes bad. Let's try the Centauri. Something we know. Awesome. It's, it tastes like Bud Light, which for a non-alcoholic beer is not hard to do, but for a non-caloric beer, it is kind of difficult to do. Up on the nose, it smells like beer, but there's a little bit more bread to it. Almost approaching something like Steel Reserve or uh, malt liquor, but not there yet. Very straight lager smell besides that. A little bit lemony, not lemon pledge, more like the idea of a lemon. Tastes good. It does have kind of that ricey taste over everything that uh, Bud Light has. And then the finish tastes like nice, clean lager. Very thin, but when you compare it to Sugar Master over here, that's a good thing. And last, probably not least, is ours. Color, not good. No foam head, but let's see how it tastes. Comparing this to the Lagunitas is unfair. Lagunitas, from what I've tasted of them, they know what they're doing with IPAs. And if you didn't tell somebody that this was non-alcoholic, a lot of people say this for advertising sake, but there are enough good flavors in here. The texture is convincing, the mouthfeel is convincing, the color and the head are very reminiscent of what an IPA should look like. People would believe you if you told them that this was just Lagunitas, maybe not Lagunitas IPA, if they're familiar with it, but just an IPA. Very good, I'm getting a little bit more of that citric tang on the front end. Not a hop citric tang, like a citric acid citric tang. As far as ours goes. The roasted flavor is the difference between this and this. There's a roasted flavor that's not present in this. It's a little bit present in this if you kind of twist your mind to convince yourself that rice tastes like roasted barley. But um, it's not an intermediary. This isn't a spectrum. These are three completely different beverages. Carbonation is spot on. Nice taste of hops. Like I said, not anywhere near as nuanced as the Lagunitas. But way more hops flavor than this. This has no bitterness to it at all. Very little citric taste. Or not citric, very little citrus taste to this um, besides that hint of lemon that idea of lemon not even LaCroix lemon just you close your eyes and think about it and think of something yellow that's what's going on in this so I like that the hops are present in this and that may be what makes a difference between me never making this again and continuing with trying to get this better Color has a lot to do with it, right? You do want what you're drinking, if it's a substitute, to have the appearance of what you should or want to be drinking. But besides that, I think the flavor is good. What I would do in the future, 
maybe use less roasted barley, maybe use a very lightly toasted grain. Or if we want to go whole hog, I can take the barley out of their pouches and roast them further. Roasted barley grain is not going to have the same flavor as malted roasted barley, but it's going to be pretty close, especially between non-alcoholic beverages. Centennial hops are really nice. I'd say that besides color, this was a success. I would say that besides color, this was a success. This was a good thing to do. This is still nice as a treat. And if you've never had a zero calorie beer, which many of you haven't, I'd recommend picking this up. You'll be very impressed with what they can do. But I'm not gonna buy it again because I know that if I go a little bit further playing around with this, I'll get something that's spot on or I can just make hop tea. Thanks so much for watching. I'll have new good videos soon. Take care.